Hello everyone and welcome to this 1O tutorial series where we will cover everything you need to know to survive in 1O multiplayer. And in this episode 1, we're going to cover the preparation. Everything you need to get correct before getting right into the multiplayer. Because whilst you can't win the game by deck building, you can absolutely lose the game before it even started in deck building. So let's jump into the armory and let's get into it. And the first thing you have to do when you want to build a deck is you have to pick a division. So there are a lot of options here. And if you're new, I would recommend three divisions to you. Those are the 8th Führer's Infantry, the 2nd West German Panzerkommandier Division of the Bundeswehr, and the 39th Motostrolke Division uh, of the Red Army. As those three are all really well-rounded divisions, and they all cover all the bases. And they also always have been pretty solid throughout the life of the game so far, and I'm certain they will be in the future as well, as they are just such good all-rounders, and they get you pretty well into the game when you're new. So, for the deck building guide, we're also gonna start with the 39th here, and we're gonna jump into how to build a deck there. Let's get into it. So, let's get into building a 39th deck. If you wanna have information about any of the other decks, you can find the Deck Deep Dive video series on this channel as well, where I jump into each of my decks and all the strengths and weaknesses of those divisions. And you can also find a list with all the decks of mine in the description down below if you want to draw inspiration from those. But the basics we will cover here and we're going to start with the infantry tab as that's the tab where you usually should start your building at. In the infantry tab you usually want to have 35 to 50 units to get you through a game. And we're going to start here with the basic covering everything with VET1. That's another basic you should start one as the buff that one level veterancy gives you over the green experience level is quite massive. And we're gonna then adjust that at the end. More information about veterancy and how to pick and choose it, you will get in the end. But infantry-wise, you usually want to start around round one. We have 48 infantry here, so we're on the top end, as this is more of an infantry division in general. And then you want to cover your bases. You want to have anti-infantry, which the uh, Saperi, Apio, and Saperi cover here. You want to have ATGMs, which the Conquerors and the Motostrolke Medis in this division cover for us. And then you want to have anti-infantry, and if possible, also some uh, uh, or baseline infantry with short range anti-tank, like the Motostrolke RPG-22 here, which also, if potentially, should come with some IFVs. We have BMP-2s and BMP-1PGs in this division, which is quite nice. And then some fast transport options for the early game and if you need a quick reserve here with the Motostrolke and the Motostrolke Medis which come in BTR 60s uh, to the battlefield and then we have some Saperi Comrade here as a leader unit. That's the next thing we're gonna go into the leaders so let's go over to the logistics tab. And in the logistics tab it's all about the CVs and the logistic vehicles. CVs is a pretty important part of the game obviously it's how you win or lose the game and you want to have some reserves there i usually aim for five to eight cvs depending on how aggressive the deck is here we go for a middle ground of six we have two in the infantry tab we will have two more in the tank tab and then that means the logistics tab there you fill up the numbers that you don't get in infantry and tank so here we get two more to get ourselves two six cvs and next to that we also take supply supply depends on usually it's two to three cards that you want to take off supply if you want to use more artillery you should get more supplies so here we take three because we will use a good bit of artillery as well and that's how the logistics tab works filling up the cv numbers and getting yourself enough supply to get your infantry tanks and artillery resupplied efficiently so let's move on to that RT tab as the artillery tab is always focused around two things. Either outright killing enemy positions and or supporting your pushes. And this deck, it's a bit of a mix of both, though a bit more focused on supporting what uh, your pushes because you have enough kill power in your BMPs and in your tanks already. In KDA, for example, it's more about the killing part of things as your infantry and your tanks don't quite have the killing power. So here, you 
gonna take some mortars, which are mostly used for smoke screens or for grinding out um, city fights, where you just keep on constantly firing onto the enemy town and deal the enemy attritional damage. They aren't really precise, you can't take out direct positions with it usually. Um, that's where you rather want to use your D20s for. These or Quadstikas or Akatsias, as these guns, like the 122, but especially the 152, 255 uh, millimeter artillery, is there to kill off enemy ATGM positions or killing off enemy AA positions and dealing with those. And then the Eurogun and the Grad are here to soften up enemy defensive positions and killing off enemy CVs when you know where they are, killing off enemy um, infantry blobs and stuff like that. That's where the Eurogun and the Grunt come in here. MLRS, since the la last patch, a good bit more useful and I'm pretty sure they will stay through the uh, future as well. So yeah, artillery either about killing or about supporting your stuff. Here it's a mix of both a bit. Let's move on to the tank tab. And the tank tab, obviously, for most divisions, is one of the most important tabs. It's where you get your strongest offensive and defensive frontline tools. And what you want to aim for here is around 10 heavy tanks or 30, 20 to 30 medium tanks, uh, depending on division. Here we get pretty heavy tanks with the BVs, so we went for 10 of those here. And then a bit more defensive tools here good long-range ATGMs and guns with the Rapira to have ourselves covered. And to get up to the 10 number, a one low wet KDBV card here. Could change out one more BV card against the Rapira, but I like to have the Rapira here. A uh, good couple of other decks have decent ATGM vehicles like the Jaguar now as well, which you can use, uh, or other pack decks with Rapiras out there as well. Good defensive tools that you want to have to hold the flank. Well, it's the BV, obviously, is more of an aggressive push tool that allows you to break frontline, and it's pretty good at that. So, yep, that's the tank tap here. You want to have decent enough numbers to get yourself covered. And usually, up vetting here, pretty strong as well, and they are what you want to use to get yourself offensive or defensive, depending on what the tap offers to your specific division. And then in the recon tab, it's two goals. Uh, recon in Vorno, obviously, first of all, has the job of spotting the enemy. And for that, you need enough recon units to get yourself through the game without running out of it. Usually 10 to 15 frontline infantry units are necessary for that. So here we have 11 with the Grenzer and the Modra Jvetka, which also come with a BTR-60. Um, so... That's part of it. And the other part is the forward deployment of recon units and the fighting against other forward deploy units. And here, 39, for example, is rather weak. You don't have any airborne forward deployment in this in this division. And your forward deploy recon units are also not the strongest. But in divisions like this, you have something to counter it. Here, for example, you have the Mi-24K, which you should use to try to interfere with enemy forward deployment. That's why we take the 24k here to hit enemy forward deploy infantry and stop them from rolling too close to us. So that's the two goals here. Either really strong uh, fighting forces for the beginning of the game or end or enough infantry units and vehicles to get yourself enough spotting and optics throughout the game. So here, four Grenzers some Madura Shvetka and the Mi-24K. Let's go on to A. And in anti-air, obviously, the goal is to shoot everything down that is flying on the enemy side. And there are two things that can fly in Wano. Helicopters and airplanes. So you want to cover both of those bases efficiently. And that's why you usually, if possible, want to take a long-range AA like the Coop here to shoot enemy planes that are coming into your air defense. And then you want to put something like the Tela uh, uh, Strela 10M into your deck as well to deal with helicopters, but assisting the anti-aircraft a bit as well. Uh, there are other tools like the Preusa and so on in these decks as well. The Tela uh, Strela 10M is a pretty solid 
and the helicopter tool in general though. And then usually you want to have one or two man pad cards uh, in your deck as well. Up vetting them by now, pretty efficient as well, to cover your front line and get yourself enough AA out there to deal with any enemy helicopters that just try to be a nuisance. Like the Eaglers are there for attrition and for making the enemy consider their move again. And that's why you use man pads. And the role of the helicopters in your decks are anti-tank or anti-infantry and two major jobs usually protecting the flank or cleaning up in the rear area behind you. Uh, the attack helicopters like the Mi-24V are obviously pretty good against infantry. And they also have some decent ATGMs here, whilst, for example, in the West German decks you only get anti-tank. That's one of their weaknesses, as you can't cover everything. And the Mi-24V AA also somewhat supportive against dealing with enemy helicopter rushes and stuff like that, but mostly you're going to use these still as anti-infantry, um, with the AA just being an extra option here. And yeah, the Soviet helicopter is mostly focused around anti-infantry and anti-light vehicles, whilst they can assist against tanks as well, whilst most of the NATO helicopters are more focused in dealing with enemy vehicles. So those are the roles of the helicopter tab that you want to cover. Um, here we have a bit of a mix of both, with more focus on cleaning enemy behind our lines, helping out against enemy forward deployment, and uh, dealing with infantry and light vehicles in this tab, as we already have strong enough tanks to be able to deal uh, with tanks. If you lack the penetration power in tanks, uh, in your tank tab, you might want to consider getting stronger ATGM helicopter in your helicopter tab. So let's move on to the last tab and the air. And the aircraft tab also is usually trying to cover three things. Four, if you have the chance of fitting it in. And those are anti-air, which we have the SU-27 for from stopping enemy planes, dealing with enemy helicopters. SU-27, obviously a pretty good fighter. And uh, HE damage, which in this deck here is being covered by the LGB bomber. And then anti-tank which is covered by the SU-24 cluster in this case. Um, obviously, you have different options for all of this, but those are the three baselines. And then, if you can fit it in, a seat plane can be helpful in making the mission of the anti-tank and the anti-infantry easier. But usually, those are the three things that you want to have covered. You want to have an aircraft for every of these roles, because aircraft are your reactive unit most of the time that can either enable a push or stop an enemy push. So that's how you want to use aircraft. If you see that you're about to be able to break through, get an aircraft and make that go, uh, hole bigger. Or if you see that an enemy is coming at you and you know that they don't have the strongest air defense set up yet, you can use your bombers and your clus clusters to get rid of an enemy push and give yourself more time to get your defense re ready. So yeah, those are the tabs. Let's get back to the veterancy and the numbers about that. And the important number you need to remember before considering how much to upvert your units is 11,900. That's the whole income that you get throughout a 1v1 rank game. In 10v10s, it's a bit lower even. So 11,900 is the number you have to cover with your deck to get yourself through a 40 minute game for sure or through a 60 minute uh, 10v10 game and here in this deck we are currently if you uh, add up all the tabs at 12,440 as you can see on the screen right now so we are a bit above that that's my sweet spot usually around 500 points above it so that if a game goes uh, through it all, I'm just barely still able to field units and have a bit of choice left, but I use the most efficient units on the front line that I can because veterancy is free. Like, veterancy doesn't cost you points, so getting more efficient units onto the front line is important. And if you bring everything on lowest veterancy, then you your units are less cost efficient. So try to reach for that 11,900 number. Keep it in mind. Obviously, at some point, you have a feeling already for how much you can put into a deck without running out of stuff, but that's the number that you need to keep in mind. And if you are new to building a deck, maybe uh, 
calculate it all and see how how close you are to that number and if you realize oh i'm way above it then uh, change up some veterancy get a couple of higher veterancy units usually infantry and tank is where you want to use it the most currently um with artillery and so on not super important about it yet so yeah that's the last big thing about deck building how to split up veterancy based on the income that you have available and with that said guys thanks for watching and see you in the next one in the next tutorial series let me know down below if this was helpful and what else you would like to know and yeah bye bye have a great day